Hey, what's up world? How you doing? Twisted J here and welcome. I have a game here for you. It's called West of Loathing. Uh, from what I can tell, not a whole lot of people have played it, but I've decided to. It's an interactive game that, depending on what class you choose, depends on the storyline that you have. Now, there's a couple different things to choose from, and you'll see them in just a minute. And no one story is quite the same. You interact with people differently depending on your choices that you make, and it's all really fun. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to set up my character right here right quick. Twisted. J. And let's hop into this. I had the strangest dream. I was choosing a character class. Cowpuncher. Cow punchers solve their problems with their fists, whether it's shaking them at a disagreeable feller in a disreputable saloon, or using them to punch a slightly more disagreeable feller in a slightly less reputable saloon. You've heard of the cow punchers are in demand out west since the cows came home, which stands to reason the cows aren't going to punch themselves after all. On second thought, bean slinger. Magic and cooking are inexcitably intertwined and loathing and the bean slinger is the mystical master of both you've heard here you've heard there's a shortage of cooks out west since the cows came home due to most of the cooks having been brutally killed by the cows these cows are very dangerous apparently snake oilers rely on their moxie and kutzpa to tame snakes, their fearlessness to extract potent oils from the from these snakes, and their cleverness to manufacture and sell potions made from those oils. You've heard of snake oilers are doing really well out west since the cows came home. Everybody needs potions and hope in these dark days. And also out west is where all the best snakes live. Hmm. What seems like a good class? You know what? Let's go bean slinger just because it's a little bit different. I want to be a bean slinger. Your room. So I move with ASWD. You read the spine of one of your books, The Journey to Eagle Jungle. I remember that one. Escape from the Forgotten Castle. I remember that one. Fetus Danger and the Trouble at the Spooky Graveyard. <laughs> I read that one ten times. Wyatt Swift and Eerie Cellar. I love that one. The Occurrence at the Forgotten Castle. Dad gave me this one when I was a kid. P Paco Jones and the Secret of Butcher's Canyon. Dad gave me this one when I was a kid. Oh, this one might come in handy. You got an item, Walking Stupid. <laughs> okay. I can comb my hair. Hey, I got skill. Let's turn that off. Hey, Russell, how you doing? Caw! I'm gonna miss you, buddy. Caw, caw, caw. Feed Russell cricket. You grab a, cri a cricket from the cricket bag and you feed it to Russell. He coos appreciatively and nuzzles your hand. Goodbye, Russell, be good. Maybe it's time for you to leave, too. You know, I, I would feel kind of bad just leaving him here in a cage by himself. You open your bedroom window, not pictured, and unlatch the door to Russell's cage. He winks at you, calls one last time, and he flies away to the west. It's time to hit the trail. Oh, I have a new item. Walking stupid. This book tells the tale of a renegade sheriff who's really, really bad at walking. Unlock stupid walking as an option. <laughs> Most definitely. <laughs> you read the book from cover to cover and learn how to walk really stupidly. <laughs> it's been added to your options menu. You got the perk, stupid walking. Nice. You accidentally drop the book and then ruin it by stepping on it 30 times while you're trying to pick it up. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> options. Automatic spend, XP, show combat grid, nerd mode, best friend mode. Oh, best font mode. Sorry. Uh, save inventory options, colorblind mode, stupid walking. <laughs> Yeah, I just want that off because I, I don't know. <laughs> we oh. <laughs> hey. <laughs> You're going to miss mom's cooking. 
This hearth really puts the hearth in hearth and home. It's mom's pie safe. It keeps all her pie safe. You'll really miss meals with the family. Your little brother's room. You pick up one of your brother's weird books and flip through it. Trachacatus Logico Philosophicus. What a weird kid. You pick up one of your brother's weird books and flip through it. Trite de superstitions estes equations algebraicus. I probably mispronounced that horribly wrong. Grundelagen irgen allgemeinen manifligatorvel. I don't know. <laughs> Nothing over here. So tidy. Hey, let's look inside my brother's toy box. Hey, I got a puzzle cube. Cool. <laughs> Sorry, I can't get over the stupid walking. <laughs> Oop, going out the door, I suppose. Um, what's this way? No time to screw around in the woods. Time to head west. Mom smiles warmly as you approach. I'm leaving now, Mom. We're gonna miss you, kiddo. Oh, and before you leave, I've got a present for you. A present? Yep, it's a book you wanted for Crimbo. I know it's early, but the one about picking locks, oh boy, the one about desert survival, the one about bartering. Uh, I'm going to go with picking locks. Please be careful out there. Write us a letter when you can. I will, Mom. Goodbye. Your father morosely jabs at the haystack. That hat doesn't fit you, Dad. I'll grow into it. <laughs> <laughs> it's time for me to leave. His lips quivers a little. Listen, I uh want you to have this. It's your grandmother's favorite can of beans. You got an item, can of beans. You think a can of with an unlimited number of beans and it would be really exciting, but these beans are pretty terrible. It's a pretty cool thing to carry around though. This item goes into your offhand. Plus one spell damage, plus one muscle, plus one moxie. Thank him. Thanks, Dad. G g yeah. Good luck out there. Be sure to say goodbye to your mother. I did. Goodbye, Dad. He's just barely holding it together. It's probably best for you to just go. Your mom raises her eyeball. I just want a more hug before I leave. She smiles and hugs you again. Your brother Rufus is standing here looking nervous. He's pretty good at looking nervous. Give him his puzzle back. You hand him in the puzzle and he starts fidgeting with it. Say goodbye. Hey Rufus, it's time for me to head west. I still don't understand why you're leaving. He's got a good point, you know. Why are you going west anyway? To help people to seek my fortune. To get off this stupid farm. Yeah, I'm going to seek my fortune. There's just no g opportunity here, kid. If I'm going to make something of myself, i got to go where I can make some meat. But it's so dangerous. 60% of the people who go west get killed within a year. And that's a statistic is from before the cows came home. I'll be okay. You worry about taking care of mom and dad, and I'll worry about me. Okay, if you say so, I still think you'll be dead by Grimbo. I'll miss you, <laughs> Rufus. Okay, you give them a playful punch on their arm, and now it's time for me to leave. Yeah, I'm gonna dig through it. Hey, I got a needle. <laughs> Tree. Wait. Oh yeah, I forgot. I got the can thing. Um. It goes into my offhand. Oh, it's already in my offhand. I'ma read it. Hey, I got lockpicking expertise. After you're done reading it, you donate it to a local orphanage so those orphans will be able to make their escape. Go, orphans, go! <laughs> Why did that sound like a zipper? Lava fava? Bean shield? Summon a fava bean made of boiling lava and hurl it at your unsuspecting foes. Okay. Bean shield. Conjure up a whirling sphere of beans that will protect you from melee attacks. Not bad. Hellbender. You tamper with the forces of nature, making yourself a force of nature. Outfoxen. You're smarter than the box of rocks. <laughs> I would hope so. They ain't yet invented a lock that'll keep you out. Nice. 
I guess I'll, uh, I guess I'm going west. Hitch a ride across. West of Loathing, directed by Zach Johnson. Cinematic cinematographer, Victor Thompson. Film editor, Kevin Simmons. Simons? Simmons? Potato, potato. Dialect coach, Riff Connor. Let's skip the rest of that. You just skip the credit sequence where your character rode a turnip cart across the Great Plains and into the sleepy town of Boring Springs. Highlight of the trip. <laughs> director, cinema, cinematographer, film director, dialect coach, stunt choreo coordinator, key grip, and boom operator. I'm sure it was spectacular. <laughs> Dirt water. Ow. Oof. Ow. Dang it. We quit that. Hey, I'm gonna turn up. Cool. Ow. Hey, I got a broken board. Ow. I am just hitting myself all over. A sign on the door reads, Go on drinking. Ew. Ew. <laughs> that just makes such a gross noise. I'm just hitting myself on all the cactuses. <laughs> Bar, sheriff, sheriff. It's not sheriff, it's sheriff. Howdy, stranger. Welcome to Born Springs. I'm sheriff in these parts. The what? The sheriff, okay? Blasted sign painters. Say, you wouldn't happen to be looking for work, would you? As a matter of fact, I am. Depends on the work. Nope. Depends on the work. Well, how does this grab you? There's a gang of hoodlums around here, what call themselves the Fricker Gang. Last time I arrested one of them, they busted them out and they took my cellar door with them. It ain't, uh, well, it ain't much good without the door. And? And I need somebody tough, smart, and or slick to go fetch them back for me. Why don't you do it? You're the sheriff, after all. I gotta stay here and practice my chair tipping. Uh, okay, I'll give it a shot. Funny you should say that, because I'm sp <laughs> sending the deputy along with you to keep you out of trouble. He takes the pistol off his desk and hands it to, to you. Deputy pistol. Deputy, you deputize the gun. You're new in town, maybe you ain't noticed, but there ain't much to do here except drink. Here, let me write down the Fricker Gang hideout for you. He makes a little note on your map. You discover a new map location, the Fricker Gang's hideout. Got it, I'll be back with the door. Ooh, look, a mug. I can't believe I actually grabbed that. Wanted for bird theft. Naked <laughs> Mile Bernstein. Reward 200 meat. Wanted poster. Artist. Apply in person at the <laughs> human marshal's office. <laughs> Bimmy Fricker for face thieving. Reward 420 meats. Face thieving? I would hope that he doesn't take my face. Yay, another cactus. Step right up, step right out. Brad's the name and trades the game. You seriously doubt that his name is Braid. <laughs> Howdy, uh, Braid. What are you trading? Well, sir, today I'm trading locks for soap and a stick of dynamite for a needle. And to the cunning skinner who brings me three rattlesnake hides, well, to that adventurous soul, I will take a fine silver pocket watch. Take some dynamite for this needle? Uh, I might need that needle. No trades right now, thanks. Hey, look, a hat. Ah, dang it. <laughs> yeah. It's stuck. Hey, look, person in cactus. You approach this weird cactus man hybrid. He smiles at you. Howdy, cactus man. Howdy yourself. The name's Bill, Cactus Bill. What happened to you, Bill? Well, to be honest, partner, I drank too much cactus beer and it turned me into a cactus. Doc Alice warned me this is what happened, but I didn't listen. And that's why they call you Cactus Bill? No, that's just a coincidence. Oh, does it hurt? Does what hurt? You know? Being cactus? Oh, <laughs> no, it's actually kind of nice. The natural fermentation process inside the cactus part keeps me alive. No, oh, keep me pretty drunk most of the time. I guess it <laughs> I might born. Yeah, I bet. I wouldn't be so bad if I had something to read, you know. You don't have a newspaper or anything on you. No, sorry. Well, if you happen to find one, keep me in mind. I will do. I will, Bill. No, you're not allowed in Topeka anymore, remember? Wait, <laughs> I'm banned from Topeka? Hey, 
Hey. Wait, why did I go there? Yeah, I'm going back. <laughs> Let's see what's in the bar. As you walk in the saloon, the crazy ad guy sitting to the left of the door shrieks and waves at you to get your attention. Hey, where's your hat, dagnabbit? Well, I, you can't drink here without a hat. Taint proper. He points to take a hat and leave a hat box next to the door. Check out the box. You look through the hat box and find a magical black Stetson that looks like something you'd wear. Grab it. You got an item. Item. Barely enchanted hat. You grab the hat and put it on. Thanks, sir. Pete. Thanks, Pete. He gives you a friendly, if somewhat twitchy, nod. Say, feller. Yeah. You heading west, and if you want some company, I'd be more than happy to come along. Just let me know. Well, er, no pressure. All right, I'll keep it in mind. <laughs> These guys are playing poker, or at least trying to. They keep looking back and forth from their hands to the how-to-play poker card. They came with their deck, biting their lips and concentrating real hard. Good luck, guys. He's asleep. <laughs> Howdy. I'm twisted. Howdy, twisted. I'm horse. Nice to meet you. What do you do? I'm the town hostler. Hostler? I don't know what that is. I'm the town horse selling guy. Gotcha. How's that working out for you? Oh, those horses are just flying out the door. So business is booming. Nice. No, I mean the horses keep running away. I haven't sold one in ages. Ooh. Is that why you're here drinking instead? Yep. And me being in here drinking instead of watching those horses is probably how they keep escaping. It's one of those vicious circle things. Well, I'm in need of a horse. Do you have any left? One. Kind of boring one. But it's got four legs and back to sit on. Come see me at the stable. I'll be happy to show it to you. Okay. The woman glares at you. You should probably just let her drink. You walk up to the bar and wait patiently for the bartender to notice you. While you're waiting, you see a sign taped to the back wall reading, Reward for lost mugs, 25 each. Keep waiting. Bartender finally notices you. Howdy, cowboy. Howdy, barkeep. Name's Twisted. What brings you to our little backwater? Ask about work. Oh, the usual. I came west to make my fortune. Not having much luck so far, though. Any work around here these parts? Unfortunately, Born Springs already has more people in it than uh, than jobs. It's more of an errand town, if you catch my meaning. If you're looking for a real job, I'd recommend talking to the railroad people up by Dirtwater. I'm going to ask about Dirtwater. Dirtwater is interesting. It is far enough west that it's still more or less exempt from the rule of the law, but not so far west that it's been burned, by the <laughs> burned to the ground by the damn cows. Lots of property there. Pause for a few seconds, lost in thought. Yep, if I were a younger man, I'd probably head that way myself. Ask about the railroads. The Manifest Destiny Railroad Company from back east. They're trying to run a line to Frisco and having a heck of a time doing so. And they're hiring? Oh, I reckon they're always hiring for one thing or another. Big company, that. Ask about errands. You mentioned errands. Yeah, the Forsaken Berg is always falling apart in one way or another. The hustler always needing help since he hurt his leg. And that no account sheriff could certainly stand to have somebody doing his job for him. Anything else? Well, I've got a goblin loose in the basement. Some cow poke in the gulch didn't wipe his boots off and got spores everywhere. I can probably handle a goblin. Much obliged. I'll unlock the basement door for you. Oh, you'll be needing this. Weak fungicide. I'll take care of that. I already have a hat. What would I do with two? Many things. I should probably leave him alone. Well, I'm guessing that's the door to the basement. We Found this uh, mug. Much obliged. Thanks. Who's the lady drinking whiskey out of the beer mug? That's Susie. She is a rancher from nearby, a real tough broad. I ain't recommend you pester. Why is that? Lost her whole family to a cow attack recently. Got some pent up frustration about it. Ouch. I'm gonna head outside for a little bit. Addy. Uh, I know I'm gonna take it. <laughs> Not yet.
weak fungicide. This liquid can, this liquid, the liquid in this can is actually very powerful. It's just that it's tailored to kill weak fungi. This item is used in combat. Oh, I might go check out that place. The Fricker Gang's hideout. Thud Fricker. The Fricker Gang's interpreted lookout. Appears to be taking a nap. Uh, I'm going to wake him up. You poke Thud with your boot. He slowly gets to his face. Hey, you're not supposed to be here. Thud is, well, let's say he's no Rhodes Scholar. If you assume that it... It's seven years from now, and the idiom makes sense. You feel kind of bad about the idea of killing him. Walk away, thud. Let's fight, thud. Uh... Thud, you don't want this life. Take a hike. Okay, you're probably right. Thud stumbles off into the desert. He'll probably be fine. You got a perk. Honorable. Okay. I got a perk of some sort. Uh, oh, honorable. He got a strong moral compass and his accurate ethic protractor. I hope I said that right. Honorable options will be available in some situations. Alrighty then. Get 25 meat, recovered a mug, and you got an item of a pair of silver cufflinks. Cool. <laughs> I just got a random broken board. If you wore fancy shirts, you might have some use for these. <laughs> okay. I just got a random board. Let's see what we got in here. One of the frick boys is dozing in a path. Uh, let's tie him up. Grab a nearby length of rope and carefully tie his hands together and then the handles of the tub. The sheriff can come collect them later. Let's keep sliding. Cautiously approach the Fricker gang. They are pretty engrossed in their poker game, so it doesn't actually require that much caution. You hide behind a barrel and eavesdrop on their conversation for a while. The one with the patch eye is quiet, but you gather his name is Snipe, and the squirrely one is his brother Wimpy. What's your play here? Uh, I'll leave without alerting him. Hey, 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 hey. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I'm having too much fun with the whole <laughs> funny walking. Yeah. <laughs> so. Is there anything else? Oh, it's a spittoon. People spit in it. You know without even looking that it's absolutely disgusting. <laughs> I want to look in it. Yeah, it's full of spit, regular spit, gross tobacco spit, chewing gum, and it looks like a few teeth as well. It's disgusting, and the smell, ugh, even from a distance, it smells horrible. <laughs> we'll look closer. <laughs> you are now on your hands and knees, peering into the filth encrusted spittoon. I don't, I don't understand what is wrong with you. Wait, is there something shining at the bottom? <laughs> I'm gonna get it. You reach your hand toward the spittoon. Even before you touch it, you can feel the grossness in the air. <laughs> like a greasy fog enveloping the stink brass horror. It smells like the vomit through a mesquite barbecue eating contest. <laughs> you hesitate. <laughs> Never surrender! <laughs> you plunge your hand into the awful soup. It makes a sound like glop. Your skin is burning. Your eyes start to water. <laughs> I'm gonna search. <laughs> your fingers make contact with something. You pull your hand out of the devil's terrain slowly, not daring to risk splashing the contents all over yourself. You appear to have gotten some kind of ring, probably some kind of disease as well. Congratulations. <laughs> you got an item. Na nasty ring. <laughs> Hooray. <laughs> 
<laughs> Wait, where's the net? Oh, I'm wearing it. <laughs> Though getting this ring was traumatic, you have to admit that it was worth it. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. I found a mug. Thanks. Oh yeah, the horse guy. He's back in here now. Afternoon, sir. What can I do for you? How's business? Oh, uh, you know, every day I'm hustling. To tell you the truth, though, it's pretty terrible. All of my horses keep running away. Well, except this completely ordinary one. That's rough. Maybe I can help. Oh, God, yes. Thank you. Please. I'd go fetch them myself, except for this injury. I'll give you 300 meat each for finding them. How many are there? Three. Here, let me see the map. They're pretty much always run to the same places. Uh, you discover Ore Hole Mine, Boring Springs Boneyard, Thousand Snakes Gulch. Why these places? I think they like the environment that are thematically appropriate. Here, when you find one, feed it some of these oats. That should send it back here. Bag of homing oats. What do they? What does that work? How does that work? Ugh. They're special pigeon-infused oats. Okay, we'll do. See you later. Said that I had something new here. I don't know. Oh. No idea. I got new map locations. Let's go or home mine. Definitely does not bear closer scrutiny. <laughs> I don't want to dig through it. Hey, got meat. I'm guessing meat is the currency here. The mechanism is labeled Cargo Elevator Control. A poster on the wall behind reads Level 1 Blasting Cap Storage. Level 2 Plungers. Both kinds. Both kind. Oh. Plunger for dynamite and then a plunger for... Yeah. Level 3 Tools. Where do you want to send the cargo elevator? Level 1. And it looks like you're going to need a crowbar to pry one of these crates. So I need a crowbar. Let's try level two. Hey. Level three. Let's see what we got here. It's a toolbox, but it's locked. Look, can I pick it? Apparently I'm naked right now because I don't have any pants on or a shirt. Oh. <laughs> that was just that. I'm going to leave that alone. I'll come back later. Apparently I need more stuff. Let's try Snake Gulch. Ooh. Shiny rock. Dang it. Ouch. I'm going to fight it. Uh, I guess I'm going to shoot it. Qua. Ow. I'm going to hit you with my board. Bad snake. <laughs> Yay, I gained XP. Wait. <laughs> I got a perk. <laughs> <laughs> I got scabs. <laughs> Wait. Oh, yeah, here we go. Most scabby. You've been poked by so many cactuses and that your body has built up an entire extra set of skin <laughs> capillaries just to deal with the constant tiny puncture wounds. <laughs> hey, I increased my health. Cool. Boring Boneyard. Boring Springs Boneyard. Our founder, Zephin Boring. He was actually a really interesting guy. Hey, look, another mug. Benjamin Crockett. He showed up way too early. Begard Skeleton. Captain Third Calvary. This grave is really noisy. <laughs> okay. 
A skeleton. Wait, what did I say? You're not getting past it without a scuffle. Scuffle it is. Yeah. Cast my spell. Hot. Attacking my board. Wham. Cool. Hey, it's Ghost Horse. Your pulse quickens as you near the spooky translucent horse. Approach it. You approach the weird semi-transparent horse cautiously as not to startle her. Though you quickly come to the realization that this is not a horse that startles easily. Hello there. Hi, I'm a friend, okay? Nay. That's a little strange. How do you do that without opening your mouth? I'll pat her on the nose. Pat the horse's nose, which is very cold. If you were going to ride her, you would want an extra saddle blanket to keep your butt from freezing. I'll pat her on the nose again. Yep, still cold. Pat her on the nose again. <laughs> I wonder how many times I... Okay, it just keeps going. <laughs> oh, feed her oats. Here you go, girl. Have some oats. You hold out your handful of oats for the horse, but she just sort of stares at it, though. Burr. Please don't look at me like that. Snort. Pat her on the nose again. Okay, that's not doing it. Try the oats again. What's the matter? Are they not spooky enough? I'm not sure how to make these oats spooky. I guess I could put some bone meal on them, but I don't have anything handy to grind up bones with. Grave dirt? It whines. Is that a yes? Weird, okay. Add some grave dirt to the oats. You sprinkle the oats with just a little bit of grave dirt. Hold them out again. The horse gazes expressionly at them, then eats them. And with that, she glides away into the direction of town. Bizarre. Timothy, devoted husband, devoted daughter, a ba oh, that's actually kind of sad. <laughs> I can make him jump. I didn't realize I could do that. So I got one horse there. I'm going to go get my meat. Yeah. Said something about an injury earlier. Said something earlier about an injury. Yeah, I busted my knee while mucking out the shower room. Don't ask how, it's embarrassing. I was gonna get Doc Alice to have a look at it, but she gave up doctoring. Why'd she do that? Nobody knows. She just shut herself in her office, said she wouldn't talk to anyone except Nurse Whiskey. Is that an actual nurse, or I'm pretty sure she was just being sarcastic? I see. Why does the bar have a top door, but. I wanna go down here. Hey, Whiskey! Yeah, that was the. I don't want to attack him just yet. <laughs> that sound is just gross. Off for the whiskey. Whiskey delivery for you, Doc. What brand? Nurse whiskey. Your favorite, I'm led to believe. Didn't know she makes house calls. All right, hold on. You hear the uh, rattle as she unlocks the door. Enter the house. Doc Alice, she looked to be about in her 50s. Her hair is graying and her face is lined, but her eyes are still clear and sharp, if bloodshot. She holds out her hand. Whiskey, stat. Don't give it to her. She scowls at you. Well, what the hell did I let you in for then? You shrug. <laughs> hey, Doc, can I look at your books? Not until you give me that whiskey you promised. Okay, okay, fine. Hey. Give it to her. She cracks open the bottle of whiskey and fills a small flask. She takes it out of her pocket, and then she puts the flask back in her pocket and starts to chug out of the bottle. Jeez, Doc. That doesn't seem healthy. Well, who's the doctor here? Me or you? Okay, point taken. Hey, Doc, can I look at your books? Sure, if you want to. Not that they're going to do you much good in this doomed forsaken hellhole. You should try being less cheer. You should try being less cheerful, Doc. Check out the books. You survey the books on Alice's shelf. They're all medical textbooks except for a few. Leaf through the legend of curly meats. Life of the works of the Fred Ferguson. I think I, I think his grave was in there, maybe. Maybe someone related to him. The Goblinoid Tongues, a primer. Make like a leaf, tree and leaf. Uh, start the survey on the books on Alice's shelf. They're all medical books except for a few. Uh... Blurf have passed, and you know that Blurf is the goblin word for hour. You've learned to speak goblin. Sort of. 
It got a perk, Goblin Tongue. Okay. Legend of Curly Meats. The book tells the story of a legendary treasure, a massive chest full of premium meat, secreted in the hidden sense, not that extruded sense, in the western desert by an old cowhand named Curly Butterfield. Hey, make a tree and leaf. TNT. Wow, she shouldn't be this further away from the... <laughs> shouldn't that be further away from the fireplace? Either she's really compulsive about cleaning or she never cooks. Doc Callis continues to pour whiskey down her neck, occasionally stopping to breathe. Um, is everything alright? That depends on how fast I can get this whiskey into my bloodstream compared to how fast my liver filters it out. I can't talk and drink at the same time, so she glares at you meaningful. So what's, uh, I mean, what's the matter, Doc? What's the matter? The whole world's gone to hell in a horse scat, and you ask what's the matter? Bandits, cow demons, dead men, walking. Why don't you go ahead and pick one, and I'll drink to that. Dead men walking? Hey, we did see a skeleton earlier. You haven't seen it? Scor corpses and skeletons staggering around like puppets, like half their strings cut, looking to take a bite out of the living. Oh, yeah, there was that skeleton in the cemetery. See? It's nice to get uh, some outside confirmation that I'm not losing my damn mind. And how is that even possible? It isn't possible! It goes against everything I know about medicine. Dead patients don't get back up. Patients? Ooh, ouch. Doc Alice turns away, grimacing. Every doctor loses one now and again. You never get used to it, but, well, it happens. But what doesn't happen is them coming back after and looking for revenge. That must be pretty rough. Rough? Buddy, I don't think you comprehend the situation. It's not just patients. It's neighbors, friends, husbands. Oh. Um. Um, indeed. She turns away from you and focuses her attention back on the bottle. Hmm. I feel kind of bad for her. Oh yeah, I recovered mugs. Let's go turn those in. Nice. How'd you know my last name? I saw the graves in the cemetery. Susie scowls bitterly and mutters into her whiskey. I saw it happen. Saw the whole damn thing and couldn't do nothing about it. The bartender, sent, bartender said it was cows? What? Cows, right. I don't know what those things are, but they ain't cows. Not anymore. What happened? It was a raid. See, Ma and Pa used the ranch to use the ranch cattle back before, well, before they came home. Pa didn't make it. But Ma and I managed to rebuild. We ranched pigs instead. And she left me this place when she passed. Go on. Well, I guess a passing herd sniffed out that it used to be a cow ranch and they attacked. A couple days ago. Happened so fast I didn't have time to grab my rifle out of the gun safe. Cow smashed in the front door and a fire started out in the back by the root cellar. Houses went up in blazes just like that. What did you do? I... There was nothing I... There wasn't anything I could do. Couldn't get upstairs to the kids because of the fire, and I saw Tim trampled right in front of me. I just... She drains her glass. I ain't want to talk about it anymore. Sorry. She refills her mug from the bottle on the bar and doesn't reply. Well, what will you do now? Head west, I suppose. Nothing keeping me here and no desire to stay. I can't leave without my rifle, though. Why not? It was Ma's rifle. It's all I got left, if anybody... Where is it? Left at the ranch like a damn fool. Listen, can I ask you a favor? I need someone to go get it for me. Why don't you go get it yourself? Oh. Okay, maybe that was the wrong answer. <laughs> I got a new location. The Crocker Ranch. Yay! All the water boiled away. Susie's ranch has burned down to the ground. Something behind this door is making some pretty awful noises. I'm going to go through it. Looks like somebody was in the middle of fixing a knife. Grab it. Varmint skinning knife. Hey. These pies were not safe. That's a cow head. I'm going to fight it. Uh, five to six. Fire! Ow. Fire again. 
Ow. One more shot should do it. There we go. Woo! Yay, I got Susie's rifle. Cool. Wait, was there anything else in there? Oh, yeah, I got that knife. This knife is optimal for separating varmints from their hides. Allows you to collect skins after combat. It's an old rifle, but it's obviously been well cared for. There are six little notches carved into the stock. Hmm. Oh, yeah, I got that paper. I can go give it to that cactus man. I totally forgot about that. Uh, use over here. Is there a way to... Cactus Man, give him the newspaper. Much obliged, partner. Now let's see here, what can I do in return? Oh yeah, I know, my shovel. I left it behind the outhouse at the old oral mine. It's yours if you go and get it. I'm sure you'll find a use for it. Got it, thanks. Don't mention now if you could just kind of stick newspaper in my face before you leave. Alrighty then. To the ore mine to grab the shovel. Yeah! Those little piles of dirt. That's probably what this is for. Yeah, that's. I'm gonna shovel it. <laughs> there we go. Hey, it's mug. Yay, more meat. Give me all the meats. I'll take all the meats. Hey, hey, hey. Found a mug. Thanks. Oh yeah, I give her a rifle back. Yep, here she is. Susie's eyes well up with tears as you hand her the rifle, and she roughly scrubs her sleeve across her face before any of them spill over. Thanks, stranger, I didn't catch your name. I'm Twisted. Thanks, Twisted. Can't rightly say what this means to me. She looks at the rifle for a long moment and looks back up at you. She sighs. Well, that's enough wallowing in misery. Time for me to hit the road. If you want me to tag along with you to head west, just say the word. Sounds good, Susie. Then there's the goblin downstairs. Goblin shouts, I'm Gary! Er, hi, Gary. Hi, hello. Hello, I am Gary. Who are you? Introduce yourself. Well, I'm Twisted. Hello, hello, Twisted. Good to meet you. What Twisted doing down here? Uh, I'm going to be honest. Well, Gary, to be honest, the bartender sent me down here to uh, to kill you. He wrinkles his nose. Hey, what the being terrible idea. Bartender not being good idea, man. Gary wants to popping, but not here. Too close. Too close to home. Gary wants to be popping far away and high away. New Gary everywhere. 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 Man, goblins are freaking weird. Settle down, Gary. Gary doesn't like to settling. Gary wants to be traveling and popping. If Twisted going far up and high away, maybe taking Gary with you? Eh? eh? I'll think about it. I'll let you know. I got new stuff. What do I get? Oh, unrefined meat. A chunk of mostly worthless rock shot through with veins and gristled and flesh and, well, veins. Alrighty. Oh, yeah, I still have to go grab those horses. Uh, thousand snakes. Hello, Mr. Snake. I'm going to fight you. Ow, poison. It does the same amount of damage. Okay. Now, that's not very nice, Mr. Snake. You stop that. No. Hey, I got an item. <laughs> Stupid snake and freaking poisoning me. All right, take my hot beans. Wait, that didn't do that much damage. Dang. Ow. 
Ow. Oh, come on. No, 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 no. Okay. <laughs> this should be it. Yes! Hey! Whoa, whoa, what the hell is up with his eyes? This horse has gone snake crazy. Or maybe it was just some kind of crazy, other kind of crazy before. Hey there, boy. Hey, fella, I'm a friend, okay? <laughs> it's cool, alright? Be cool. Don't freak out on me. I'm gonna look him in the eyes. You call me look the horse in the eyes. One of them is fixed in a glassy <laughs> thousand yard stare. The other one is revolving madly in its socket like he's thinking. Trying to escape in every direction simultaneously. He looks to be calming down a little. And now it's clear that you aren't actually made of spiders though. <laughs> Why the hell would I be made of spiders? You carefully and gently pat the horse's nose. He twitches a bit. Okay, a lot. But seems to recognize that you aren't going to eat his eyes or suck out his soul. Whatever madness is bouncing around in that skull of his. That's a good boy. <laughs> Feed him the oats. Are you hungry, boy? I got a little treat for you. Snurf. You feed the crazy horse some kind of homing oats and it gallops away whining. Or rather, a oh, nagel. Hopefully, he's headed home and into the 12th dimension. Cool. Gotta hit my cactuses. <laughs> Hey, I got snake. Hey, I can put it on my hat. It's cool. Wait, how do I do that? Apply to hat. Cool. Ow. Wait, I don't have what? One oh yeah at the ore mine, but I have no idea how the hell I'm gonna get it. Oh yeah, I needed a crowbar. Where the hell am I gonna get a crowbar from? I have no idea. Let's go collect my meats. So I have one more horse that I need to grab. Where the hell do I get home? What's the deal with all the TNT? It's so when I feel like I'm about to go, I can blow myself into bits so small that there won't be nothing left to come back to. That seems drastic. Drastic hell? No way am I taking risk of becoming one of those things. Fair enough, I suppose. You have any idea what's causing the resurrections? Well, I heard a rumor. Rumor? What is it? It's when you get incomplete information from an unverified source. Smart ass. Or, anyway, what I heard is that there's a fellow out west that's causing it. A necromancer, they call him. Supposedly, he's sending magic out in the world somehow. Magic like the beanslingers use? I've never heard of any beanslingers raising the dead, have you? Her scowl deepens. That's one hell of a can of beans. Hmm. I have no idea what the hell I'm doing now. Go to the Fricker Gang hideout and capture them right quick. See if I can find a crowbar somewhere. That might be how I get the crowbar. Oh, yeah, I tied him up. Atta boys, dumb me in. The one with the eye patch raises his eyebrow at you. Who are you? How'd you get past Stud and Soapy? What do you want? It's Bimmy! Bimmy, you ain't Bimmy. Sure I am. Ask me anything. I am too. Back me up here, Snipe. I'm also Bimmy. I stole Rube's face. Ah, you always did have a knack for face rustling. What's new, Bimmy? We gotta get out of here and fast. We gotta get out of here and fast. Wimpy, the Pinkertons are on to us. They'll be here any minute. Dagnamic, come on, Snipe. Let's get out of here. I'll catch up. Wimpy nods and he's... He and Snipe hurriedly back into belongings, flee the cave. You congratulate yourself on the attentiveness, memory, and strong interpersonal skills. Let's grab the door and skedaddle. I'm going to grab that mug while I'm at it. Ill-gotten gains. Grab the door. Anything else up in here? I don't think so. Let's go to the town. Let's go visit the surf. 
<laughs> I still laugh at it the way he walks. I see the Fricker gang hasn't put a stop to your breathing. Did you rescue my cell, my cell door? You hand the sheriff his door and hangs it back up on the hinges. Nice work, stranger. There is a prison cell just got about four times more secure. Are there any Fricker boys left for me to round up? Yeah, there's one or two asleep on the job. I'll round them up shortly, then looks like I owe you a reward. 400 meat. Got another little task for you if you want. Uh, if you got time. Should be a lot simpler last one. What you need? Well, the Frickers busted a lock when they took the door. Gonna need a new lock. I'll keep an eye out. So I need a lock. And I know that dude was selling a lock, which means that I need... Well, at least I think he had a lock. Yeah. Which means I need soap. Where the hell am I going to get soap? I have no freaking clue. Uh, it was the ore mine that I had left. Soap, soap, soap. Soap and a crowbar. I don't know. Hey, I found a needle. Just browsing. <laughs> that horse sound is so weird. Hey, I got a needle. I might be able to pick that lock. Level three. Pick it. Yeah, crowbar. Wait, level two is the plungers. Dang it. I really need to pay more attention. Level one. That's what I need. And I got the blasting cap. So, blasting cap. Dynamite. Press the plunger and nothing. You've got to hook up the blasting cap. Kaboom. Oh! Hey! I found a nugget. See a dark horse. Hey there, girl. Okay, I'm a friend. Me. The horse shies away from you, though in this case it's more like creepingly introverts away from you. Reassure her. Oh, come on, don't be like that. Look, I brought you some oats for you. They aren't poison or anything. In retrospect, I guess that wasn't a very comforting thing to say. Oh, pat her on the nose. As you reach out to pat her on her nose, the horse ducks and steps away further back into the shadows. Oh, come on. Nay. You take a handful of oats out of the bag and hold them out to the horse. Here you go, yum yum. Snort. She sidles away from you warily and making a suspicious, suspicious good attempt at hiding her own shadow. Come on, please. Eat the oats yourself. Look, they're fine, see? You take a handful from the bag and toss them into your mouth. Ugh. It's like the roughest, blandest breakfast cereal you've ever eaten. Still, it's better than dry cat food. Don't ask. You smile to show your horse that you're fine and realize that you unconsciously turned away and walked out the door. Jeez, these are powerful. Horse looks at you warily as you re-enter with a cheerful wave. See? Perfectly fine. Pat her on the nose. Horse hunches her shoulders and seems to shrink slightly as you pat her nose. But she doesn't actually flee, so that's something. That's a good girl. Yeah? Feed her the oats. The horse finally seems relaxed enough when you around you so you offer a handful of the oats warily begrudgingly she eats them and then she gestures at something behind you you turn around and look but you don't see anything when you turn back she's gone okay and there's a hole the hell is a hole mid down you shine in your lantern the crack in the rock you can just barely make it out in the square shape down there well there's an arm's reach looks like somebody dropped a small metal box in the hole no you don't know if you want it to, don't know what it was to hide or discard if you're truly desperate to find out what's in there, you could try reasoning with the rock. Your primary argument could be that a bundle of dynamite. Perhaps you could persuade the hole to wide enough for you to grab the box. Well, it looks like I need three dynamite. Well, I got one. Oh! 
Just browsing for now. Hmm. Is there anything else that I need to do? Oh yeah, I need the lock. Howdy. Where do I get soap from? I don't know what I'm doing now. Mm, mm. I need more dynamite. I'm riding the lantern. <laughs> well, guys, uh, I'm having some trouble finding the soap and to get the <laughs> to get the lock that I need. So I think I'm gonna call it here, and we'll pick this back up at another time. And with that, I'll see you guys in the next time. Bye. Hey guys, just a little bit of an afterthought that came to mind is that I know this video is really long and I know a lot of my other videos tend to be a little bit longer too. And I do apologize for that. I'm trying to work on that. I'm trying to make smaller videos. But with this being a very story oriented video, it's kind of hard not to be long. So uh, either way, I hope you guys enjoyed this. And if you did, I hope you leave a like, you subscribe. Uh, you'll get to see more videos like this later in the future and a whole assortment of different other kind of stuff later on. And with that, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.